Good afternoon all. Today I'm going to look at this uh, boost converter, DC to DC step up converter. Um, it has two pots, so one of them will be voltage, one will be current. I don't know exactly which one is which yet. Um, it's rated at 250 watts. Now that's going to be rated at the higher voltages. Uh, if you bring the voltage down, of course the current goes up and there will be current limits. I don't think it's got an input current limit. Um, although it has got an output current limit. Um, of course that varies depending on how hot you want the thing to get. So they say add additional heat sinking if you want to put more current through it. But uh, primarily I'm interested in driving 100 watt LEDs, certainly one, maybe even two. So this is the item I bought on eBay. Um, it's described as DC-DC boost converter constant current 250 watts, 10 amps. I think that's 10 amps maximum output current, $4.70. There is a $1.25 shipping. This came from Jury China. But uh, I'm interested in the spec, which is down here. Now, input voltage uh, can go as low as 8.5 volts. Well, I'm going to run this off 12 volts. It can go as high as 48 volts. Um, output voltage can go up to 50 minimum of 12. Output current, this is uh, the most interesting bit probably, 10 amps max. Please enhance the heat dissipation if more than 6 amps. Uh, output constant current says 0.2 to 8. I'm not quite sure how you can get 10 amps max if it's constant currenting at 8 amps. Anyway, uh, easy to drive, 65 watt, uh, that's how to drive a laptop. Conversion efficiency 96%, yeah, probably under optimum conditions. 150 kilohertz uh, oscillator frequency. You've got ripple, temperatures, dynamic response. Over circuit protection. I don't know what over circuit protection is. In fact, it doesn't mean anything, does it? Over circuit protection. Input reverse polarity protection, yes, but there is a caveat there. We'll have a look at that in a moment. Um, so a quick look at the circuit here. I mean, a boost converter is essentially V in, goes through an inductor, goes through a diode. Now they've put two Schottky diodes in parallel here, what looks like in parallel, and then comes out, and then you switch this point between the inductor and diodes uh, to ground uh, rapidly to get the uh, back EMF, which then produces the high voltage. Now, regarding this um, reverse polarity protection on the input, this diode appears to be strapped across the input um, with its cathode on the positive end. So it kind of would provide reverse polarity protection for a while, but it would also um, short the positive, which in reverse polarity would be here, right straight through to the negative. So I don't think it would last very long. Maybe it's a short duration reverse polarity protection diode. Now down here we've got a couple of RO50, so I'm presuming that means 50 milliohms, uh, probably in parallel there. So I think we've got 25 milliohms there. Now these will be in the ground line uh, so that the left hand side of these will be connected to this negative. The right hand side will be connected to this negative. Uh, when there's current flowing through the circuit, then uh, this right hand side will lift up slightly with respect to this left hand side and the microcontroller, uh, well I thought via an op amp, but I can't see an op amp, will be measuring this small voltage uh, on the right hand side of here to uh, measure the current. Now there is what looks like a microcontroller there, it's a 16 pin uh, surface mount device. Some of these microcontrollers have op amps in them these days, so possibly that's the way they're doing it. Uh, I can't see anything else that looks like an op amp. There are a couple of transistors here and there's a device here, but I'm assuming that's uh, a voltage regulator to give a constant five volts or possibly less to the microcontroller from whatever you shove on the input here, which can be up to 48 volts. So let's give this a try on my LED project board. That's going to replace the 600 watt uh, boost converter, which I normally use to pot version. Uh, very similar, I suppose, in uh, function. Doesn't look like it's got quite the same amount of capacitors uh, on this one. And I'm going to try and drive uh, a single 100 watt LED. Yeah, that's on the front of that uh, heat sink there. So let's take the uh, 600 watt boost converter out. 
Uh, now I'm probably going to reuse these to go to these terminal posts on the input of the new boost converter, uh, which is that way around. Uh, that's good, pos and neg are the right way around to connect on there, so that can lie there. I'll probably stand this off so I can put my finger under it to uh, check for temperature. Now the first thing I want to do is check which pot is which, because I don't actually know, and also whether they go clockwise to increase voltage and current. They normally do, but sometimes uh, they have these things the, the other way around. So uh, let's plug that in, plug it into the power unit. Okay, so we've got 30 volts uh, coming out. So now let's find out which is voltage and which is current. Let's put this on. These pots are very flimsy because they're soldered surface mount, which is a bit nasty. Well, that doesn't seem to be doing anything. So I'll assume that's current for the moment. Let's try this one. And that's increasing the voltage in an anti-clockwise direction. And clockwise is decreasing, so it was well worth checking that. Don't like these ones that go the wrong way, but um, that one certainly does. Now we'll assume that current goes the wrong way as well, but uh, not entirely sure about that. Right, so I left the converter at about 24 volts. The uh, 100 watt LED won't draw much current at that voltage, but I just want to see what direction of travel the uh, current potentiometer is. I've uh, put my DVM in the loop of the LED circuit, uh, and I've also put it on the 10 amps input socket and the amp range. So let's plug that in and push this connector in. And the LED is on, but very dim. And of course, I've got no current there, have I? So uh, let's see if the uh, I can coax some current out of it. That's not looking very promising. I think I'm going to have to raise the voltage. Right, well, I've set the current potentiometer to what I think is minimum. And if I now raise the voltage, it limits at about 200 milliamps at that voltage. So let's give it a bit more voltage and then see whether bringing this up increases the current. And it does. So the current pot has a minimum of about 200 milliamps. Also operates in an anti-clockwise increasing direction. So I think we're all set now. Okay, at one amp, I'm not feeling any heat under there, so let's go to 2 amps. At 2 amps, that's starting to feel warm, particularly there, which is directly beneath the MOSFET, which is just at that point underneath the inductor. What about under those diodes? Yeah, possibly, but definitely, oh yes, the MOSFET's starting to get much warmer now. Let me just check the temperature of the heatsink that the LED is on, because I haven't actually got my fan running yet, I suppose I should do that. I'm just going to take this up to 3 amps just to see what happens. Let's do that now, assuming I've got enough voltage on the voltage limit pot. Okay, so that's 3 amps. Yeah, there's quite a bit of heat coming out into the metalwork under there. Oh, and my battery doesn't like it. And uh, here it is with the LED in view. So that's the LED well and truly on. Three amps at the output. Uh, the pot, the voltage pot set high enough to deliver three amps, whatever that might be. I can't view both at the same time, but I could if I put my other DVM on. But anyway, that works fine. Now, as you can hear, my battery pack is beeping like crazy because it keeps dropping to a low voltage so I'm charging that back up or I'm going to have to charge that back up that's going to take quite a while so I'm going to move off the project board now and uh, try and test running two LEDs with six amps coming out of here um, on this piece of aluminium angle bracket. Now I've got two 100 watt LEDs that I can find uh, this one here which is mounted on the uh, computer heat sink. Uh, that's a cool white. I've also got a warm white which is mounted on my 
uh, power tool direct to a 100 watt LED project. That's got a lens on it now, but that'll all have to come off. So I'm going to put these two in parallel uh, on the front face of this piece of aluminium, and then I'm going to mount the boost converter onto the bottom floor of this aluminium, wire it all up, and then take it outside where I've got a fully charged lead acid battery, a big car battery, because it's going to draw a lot of amps at the input of this thing. Um, I mean, it was probably taking nine amps uh, to drive one LED, so 18 amps. I wonder if this thing can take that. Well, we'll soon find out, because I'm going to start uh, drilling holes in this now. Right, that's my bracket uh, all drilled and uh, deburred. So now let's mount the two LEDs on that front face and then the driver will be on the bottom there. And I have to find uh, enough bolts of the right size to fit. And uh, a bit of thermal grease, although of course it's not my intention that this be left on for any length of time on this relatively small heat sink. That looks like mostly uh, thermal oil, but let's spread that around a bit. Now there is of course an issue with this. Um, it's less likely that the driver unit will cool through the aluminium than actually the LEDs will feed heat into the driver unit. But um, part of the reason I want to use this bracket is just for sort of structural holding everything together. And I didn't intend that this would be on for any length of time. Uh, it might be driven for 10 seconds or so. This is really a lamp flasher. That's the plan. So the two 100 watt LEDs are now wired in parallel, both the positives joined together and they're wired down to the output of the driver here. Now that will tack on there, but for the moment I want it split so that I can measure the current flowing through the LED part of the circuit. Now I'm going to attach a couple of wires on here and I think I'll probably put um, banana plugs on those for my terminals on the battery outside. So I'm outside now and here's my setup. I've got the big 12 volt car battery. Now that's permanently being charged with one of my charge controllers here. So I know that that battery is uh, really well charged. So the LED module is here. The LEDs are facing away so as not to dazzle me or the camera. I've got the ammeter in circuit here. Now this is still set for three amps. So that should be fine uh, if I connect to the positive lead to the battery we should see three amps on there. And then it's a case of raising that up to six amps to see whether that driver can uh, actually handle that current. So let's try this at three amps, power on, and we've got 3.1 amps. I won't leave it on for too long because I don't want that heat sink to get too hot. Okay, I'm gonna take it up to four amps now. Right, I've discovered with a few experiments that uh, it's about 200 milliamps per anti-clockwise turn there on the current potentiometer. So I've managed to get it to uh, four amps now. Let's do that. And you can see 3.9 there. Won't leave that on for too long. Okay, up to five amps. Okay, plug in. And we've got 5.02 amps. Up to six. Well now, I've hit the end stop on the current pot. That's clicking. So that's at max. And I've been inching the voltage pot up as well. But I can only get five amps. Uh, maximum out of this unit. Now I've got my um, DVM leads of course in circuit. They're quite long. Uh, they are apparently rated for 10 amps. It says 10 amps there. Uh, this is 18 AWG wire. So maybe there'll be a little more current uh, from the unit when this is connected together. So now I've just used uh, the uh, DVM clip there to just attach the two wires together. Now of course I can't measure current but it's likely to be a bit more than 5 amps. I don't know how much but that seems to work reliably. There are no explosions. Of course as I say I don't want to leave this on too long because of the temperature rise on that piece of aluminium. And on the input side, the supply side, there's a little bit of a crack when you attach it. Not sure how much current that is. It's probably going to be around 15 amps, would be my guess. So there it is. Um, two 100 watt LEDs in parallel on a bit of two inch uh, aluminium angle. This driver, which claims uh, it can run at a maximum of 10 amps, 
or 8 amps under current control. I can't get it to go any higher than 5 amps. It might be a little higher than that uh, without my DVM in circuit. Now the question is, is 5 amps enough for these two LEDs? I mean, I know it's enough. They can take 6 amps. Maybe 5 amps is a good thing because it's less likely to blow these LEDs up. And the reason I say, is this enough, is because I've got this very long piece of angle aluminium where I can duplicate this circuit, um, well let's say a number of times because uh, I want to build the biggest, baddest LED light fitting there is. Cheerio!